When making the sequel to Alien, James Cameron tried to make his version different from the original, and not just because he wanted to keep it fresh. He also said the original turns Ripley into a sex object when she strips down to her underwear. And then she dropped her gear and was in her panties for the last scene. You see, that to me, that that stepped over that line. This criticism and his means of addressing it not only explains many of Cameron's decisions in Aliens, but it also shows the contrasting styles of James Cameron and the director of the original Alien, Ridley Scott. Aliens may have a similar story structure to Alien, but it makes the bold choice of drastically changing the tone, atmosphere, and gender dynamics of the first film. Ridley Scott favors atmosphere above all, which means creating a futuristic, gender-integrated workplace, while also using horror tropes to heighten fear. But Cameron wanted to make a more culturally aware film. That's why Ripley embodies the 80s ideals of female empowerment through excelling in traditionally male environments. An early draft of the original Alien actually notes that all characters are unisex and can be played by a man or a woman. The final film mostly reflects that idea. The majority of the dialogue is gender neutral, and nobody acts particularly feminine or masculine. The final underwear scene in Alien is far from pornographic, as Cameron implies, but it's obviously shot in a way that plays up Ripley's nakedness. Ripley strips down to get comfortable at a time when she's actually in the most danger. Her exposure highlights the anxiety of the scene by showing her vulnerability to the alien lurking in the shadows. Cameron set out to write an action film about revenge, not about fear and vulnerability, so he centered the film around a core aspect of femininity, motherhood, and used it to motivate both Ripley and the mother xenomorph. In contrast, Alien feels much more timeless, which reveals the hallmark of Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott's movies have distinct atmospheres that almost to never feel tied to the time they were made. His film Blade Runner feels like a completely foreign world, not America in the 1980s, and Alien feels just as otherworldly, not a product of the late 70s. Unlike the original film's infrequent hints at gender, Aliens regularly reminds us that Ripley is a woman. The script intentionally contains the same male locker room talk as the original, but this time, Ripley's the one rolling her eyes. There's some juicy colonist daughters we have to rescue from their virginity. <laughs> <laughs> she surprises the male soldier by showing she can operate the exosuit. Where you want it? In a scene where Ripley gets out of cryosleep, her underwear is not only less revealing, but none of the men around her look at her any differently, and the camera never gazes on her nakedness like it does an alien. In addition to the change in underwear, Cameron avoided making any female characters vulnerable at any point. Hey Vasquez, have you ever been mistaken for a man? No. Have you? <laughs> A quick look at Ripley says it all. In Alien, she's escaping in fear with her flamethrower. In Aliens, she's facing the mom head on, holding not just a flamethrower, but also a young child and an extra machine gun. And when it comes to female characters, that badass persona is a James Cameron hallmark. He loves writing female characters who can do pull-ups like Vasquez and Sarah Connor, or who fight men, like an Avatar and Titanic. Listen! and it shows Cameron's very 80s perspective on female empowerment. Cameron's female warrior take on Ripley is indicative of another one of his hallmarks. His movies are often tied to American culture at the time they were made. All you have to do to know when Aliens came out is look at the hairdos or the Reebok sneakers. Along with the 80s aesthetics, the film also reaffirms the traditional nuclear family. A scene in the director's cut shows a mother and father disciplining their misbehaving son and daughter in a space rover. Knock it off. I catch either of you playing in the air ducts again, I'll tan your hide. Even on a distant alien planet, families still act like they're straight out of an 80s sitcom. And by the end of the film, Ripley has gained a nuclear family of her own. She has a husband, a daughter, and even the android functions as a sort of loyal pet that protects the family. Perhaps these differences in style explain the differences in Ripley's character. In Alien, her character is written as gender neutral, but the film's direction plays up her femininity to heighten our fear of the xenomorph. In Aliens, Cameron downplays Ripley feminine vulnerability, but ironically, he also elevates Ripley's womanhood into a crucial element of the story. We find out in the very beginning of the film that Ripley had a daughter all along, who died while she was in hypersleep. From here, the story is the same as the first Alien, but there's an additional mother-daughter subplot between Ripley and Newt, and both the mother Ripley and the mother Alien fight to protect their young. 